What up dude bros, I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf rival Prometheus. The Prometheus is in the rival series, so of course it shoots the rival rounds. It's fully automatic, flywheel powered with a 200 round capacity, twice that of the Nerf Nemesis. So if you thought the Nemesis was already OP AF, if you know what I mean, the Prometheus has twice the capacity and a higher rate of fire. This is a heavy gunner's dream. The Prometheus officially launches in fall of 2018 and will retail for $199.99, or about 200 US dollars. Hasbro is nice enough to send me this sample unit right before the launch to get the review out, so let's get into it. Included is the blaster, a rechargeable battery, 200 rival rounds, the blaster feet, blue and red team indicator flags, the shoulder strap, charger, detachable handle, and the instructions. The feet snap into place very simply. These are not designed to be removable. The carry handle is just as easy to snap in, but it's designed to be removed, so if you want to switch to the other side for a right or left-handed shooter. The rechargeable battery is included with the Prometheus. To charge, you plug in the charger and stick it in the wall outlet. Once charged, you can slide it into the blaster and secure it with a single Phillips screw, and you're ready to pew pew. So let's go over the external features of the Prometheus, starting up with the front. As with all rival blasters, this does not have an in-strike attachment point for barrel extensions or anything. Up front, you have two sling attachment points, one on each side. This shoulder strap or sling is included with the blaster. They have nice little carabiner clips on the sides so you can attach those pretty easily. Above the rails is the front carry handle. The Prometheus doesn't have traditional ergonomics. You're not supposed to shoulder it like a normal blaster. You're supposed to hold it lower and pretty much shoot from the hip all the time. So the front handle is almost essential for that firing position. The actual handle component here spins freely on this little handle rig. So when you go to change your elevation, it spins freely and that's just comfortable. The button right in front of the handle when pressed allows you to pull out the carry handle. This is supposed to be removable. So if you wanna switch it to the other side, you can. I like that it's removable so it can get out of the way of a tactical sling if you want to run a, a particular rig or for a right or left-handed shooter or if you just want to get rid of it completely. Um, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but it frees up some space up there. Underneath the carry handle right here is a rival rail so you can fix a, a sight or whatever. Obviously, if you keep the front handle attached to the blaster, you're limited on what you can fit on that rail. Underneath the blaster are these like feet, kind of like snowshoes for the blaster. Once you attach these, they're not designed to be removable so they're supposed to stay in place. But I like them so if you set it down on a table like this or something, it, it, there's no balance issue at all. Also, also underneath the blaster is another rival rail. Not sure what you would want to attach there, but it's really awesome that you can attach something there. A bipod, a laser sight, or a tactical scope for um, inverted like Aussie shooting? I don't know. Moving up to the hopper unit, the capacity of the hopper is 200 rival rounds. 200 rounds, that's... Oh my gosh, that's so many balls. The Nemesis hopper held 100, and that was a ton of rounds. This is twice that. Balls upon balls upon balls. To load the hopper, you can pull back on the door right here, which opens it up. Then you can just drop balls in. It's super fast to reload. It's also worth noting the hopper door here is a little bit larger than the Nemesis hopper. So I've been able to speed reload this a little bit faster than the Nemesis without dropping as many balls because of the wider opening. And when you're loaded up, you can shut that hopper door like that. There's a little lock here, just like on the Nemesis. So if you don't shut the hopper all the way, the blaster might not turn on, meaning you can't fire in the open position, the hopper door has to be closed. I haven't experienced any jams or malfunctions firing the Prometheus through my testing procedure, but if you do experience a jam, you can pull up on this rail here and then lift the hopper out of its place, which exposes the flywheel unit and the feeding conveyor belt. This is essentially the access door. You pull off the hopper and you can have the same access to the, the firing mechanism. So if your balls got squished up in there and you... <laughs> So if your balls got squished up in there and you have to clear the jam, that's how you do it. You can pull out the balls and return the hopper to its place, close the door, and you're ready to go. Moving on, in the side of the blaster right here, there's a little orange button. It's real small. It's a reset button just in case the electronic systems uh, fail. Or there's another error and something's not working with the blaster, you can reset the electronics with this button. You get a paperclip and you poke it, and it resets. Moving back to the main handle. Now, like I mentioned, the ergonomics of the Prometheus are a little irregular. It's not designed to shoulder it like a normal rifle or a normal Nerf blaster. You're supposed to hold it from the hip, kind of, which explains the weird angle of the grip. Up here you have three user controls. This bottom trigger is the rev switch, which of course allows you to rev the blaster. The top switch activated with the thumb allows you to fire the blaster if it's revving. And the side switch, which is mirrored on the other side as well, is the safety. In the safe position, you're not able to rev or pull the trigger. When you deactivate the safety, you're able to rev. In the front of the group, you have an indicator light. Right now it's green solid, which means all systems fine, you're ready to fire. Flashing red means your battery is getting low and you need to pull that out to recharge it. And solid red means the battery has no charge and you definitely need to recharge it. But I beg the question, 
question, how do you have the energy to show solid red if the battery has no charge? It obviously has a little charge, unless there's a backup battery in here just to turn on the red light, which would be kind of funny. Joking aside, I think it's really convenient to have that indicator light to show you the status of your battery. But just like with the Infinis, I was a little concerned with the current draw of this little light. If you're just a casual nerfer and you charge up the blaster, you play a little bit, then you set it down, and you're not going to nerf for another week, it's kind of annoying to store the battery outside of the blaster. You might lose it or damage it, and you didn't play enough to completely make it flat, so you can get another game out of it next week. But it has a two minute timer to turn off, so it's not just going to be slowly pulling current from your battery to make your blaster go flat. And I did double check the feature after you rev the blaster or fire it or push anything, you have to wait two minutes and then it will turn off. That's it for the handle. Right behind the handle is a rear sling attachment point, and this one can twirl freely like that for the uh, style points. Not really for the style points, it's for the convenience if it's shifting around on your body. And below that is the rechargeable battery pack, and it's installed in this form right now. This rechargeable pack is included with the Prometheus, and it's not the same as the other rival rechargeable pack. To remove the battery, you take out the single Phillips screw and just pull it out of place. It's an enclosed battery system with these cool little like battery covers similar to the other rechargeable pack, so it should be relatively safe when it's disconnected from the blaster. However, I'll be storing mine in the blaster to make sure I don't lose it and to make sure I don't damage it on its own. The included charger is the same type included with the other Nerf rival rechargeable pack. Including a rechargeable battery pack increases the cost of this blaster, but I think it was a brilliant call because the weight of this is reasonable. The Nemesis is a pretty heavy blaster with six D alkaline batteries. When you put in that rechargeable battery pack, it gets substantially lighter. It would be really heavy and kind of annoying to carry around the Prometheus if it had six or probably eight alkaline batteries. So while it makes it more expensive, it's a more wieldy blaster and more comfortable and fun to use. More on the battery in my opinion segment. So those are the externals of the Prometheus. Operation of the blaster is similar to the rival Nemesis. You load up the hopper, you rev it, you pull the trigger, and you pew pew pew. Super fast. So let's see it out on the range. so much fun. <laughs> Not a full hopper, just gonna go back and forth without pulling off the trigger, like I'm trying to mow down like a forest. Imagine if that was a Zambi horn. That's that's 200 kills. <laughs> As you can no doubt tell, shooting the Prometheus is a blast. I mean, it is so much fun. The Nemesis was super fun when it came out, and I really didn't think it'd be that much more fun than the Nemesis, because the Nemesis is already overpowered. But the slightly faster rate of fire and twice the capacity, shooting the Prometheus is so much fun. It's just ridiculous. It honestly feels like you're using a modified Nerf Blaster with a hopped up rate of fire. It's just I mean, I feel like if there was a forest in front of me, I feel like I could just sway back and forth with lanes of foam to just knock down all of the brush. Obviously, the little foam balls might bounce off of trees, but in my imagination, I'm just knocking stuff down, just making lanes. My imagination is far more entertaining than reality. I'm not crazy, though. Maybe a little. Sanity is overrated. <laughs>
and I did not experience any jams or malfunctions using the Prometheus through my standard testing procedure. And I put the Prometheus up on my chronograph and I achieved an average velocity of 93 feet per second, which is a little softer than that 100 FPS rival par. But you're certainly not going to get outgunned shooting 93 FPS instead of 100 FPS, particularly with the rate of fire of the Prometheus. So it fires pretty hard, the rate of fire is nice, I did not experience any jams or malfunctions, overall the Prometheus does what it advertises. So there's certainly no objective reason not to buy the Prometheus, thumbs up. Now to my personal opinion on the blaster, this thing is super fun, it's just a total joy to use. Shooting lanes of foam like this, it really feels like a modified blaster. It does come in at a pretty high price point, it retails for about 200 US dollars, which is expensive. But in my opinion, the cost makes sense. It includes 200 rival rounds, which is about $40 on its own, plus the rechargeable battery pack, which could be maybe about 30 US dollars. It's also a bigger blaster and requires more plastic to build, and it has a little circuit board, I'm sure, to enable that auto off feature with the status indicator light. The status indicator light I think is pretty cool, but it adds another cost. So I don't wanna say $200 is not a lot of money, because it is, especially for a Nerf blaster, but I don't think it's illogical compared to the Nemesis and compared to the other offerings by Nerf. I really like that they included that rechargeable battery. It is a proprietary battery. It's not compatible with the other Nerf rechargeable uh, rival battery, but that makes sense. To incorporate that battery into this design, they would have had to rebuild the entire rear end. Perhaps it would have been possible, I don't know, but to sell this blaster with the intent of users using alkaline batteries would be ridiculous. It would be so heavy, and in this configuration, it would be super back heavy and just not fun to use with the weight of alkalines. This rechargeable pack is pretty lightweight making this whole thing feel actually lighter than the Nemesis when you run alkalines. I also like the feet here. I think they look kind of strange, but it's been really convenient just to be able to set it down like that. Particularly to reload. The Nemesis, for example, you're supposed to hold and reload. You don't really set that blaster down. With this, it'd be kind of annoying to hold it with one hand and then try to load like that. So it's nice to be able to set it down and know it won't like tip over. Because uh, talk about dropping the ball. You get it? Get it? It was a pun. When used in the intended position, I think this grip is really comfortable and easy to manipulate. It's a tiny detail, but this thing being able to freely spin like this really helps the comfort of being able to quickly change your, your target. This freedom of motion allows me to have control over the front of the blaster, but it also allows it to move somewhat freely. While it's a relatively small detail, I really appreciate that the hopper door is also larger in width. It's bigger target, so you don't drop as many balls when you're trying to reload quickly. That was a gripe of mine with the Nemesis because it tapers up like that, making this little slot pretty small. So if you try to reload quickly, I, I am end up dropping balls all over the place. <laughs> so overall opinion on the Prometheus, like design-wise, completely ignoring cost, super positive. I really like the design elements with the Prometheus. The performance is fantastic. I really appreciate the right of fire. It just shoots lanes of foam. It's just tons of fun to use. To the purchase recommendation, that completely depends on your play style. I don't think the Prometheus will replace the Nemesis entirely because the Nemesis is a more traditional, like, rifle-style platform. It's more of a primary, whereas the Prometheus is more of a specialty blaster. You have to hold it from the hip and just shoot lanes of foam all day, every day, which definitely isn't for everyone, and even if it is your playstyle, you might not want to play like this every match you play. You will be spending bank on foam, because when you press this trigger, you're not going to want to take your finger off that trigger. It's just so much fun to just spew foam all over the place. But with the rate of fire, it would be pretty quick to spend over $100 in ammo. Like, it would probably take like three minutes to burn that much ammo. <laughs> I'm hardly exaggerating. And because it's such a powerhouse, I kind of think of it as that blaster that sits in the corner behind a fortress, like up on a, a tripod or something, to act as like a support gunner, but this really doesn't fill that role that well. Because it's so clearly designed to be carried, not to be used behind a wall or something. I think it'd be really cool if this handle could like move back to be perpendicular to the blaster. So then if you're behind the wall, you could put these giant feet up on the wall and operate the blaster from a more comfortable position. From this firing position, my wrist is kind of in a weird position to do that. So the barrel would be going that way, so I could go pew pew. I think mechanically that would be pretty difficult to achieve and to maintain any level of stability in the rear, so I get why they didn't do it, but it would be pretty cool. So my opinion of the Prometheus is really positive, but I still wouldn't recommend it to every type of nerfer. It's a particular type of nerfer to run around shooting from the hip all day, especially since you have to carry like 10,000 balls with you, and that'll last like 11 minutes. <laughs> So, to buy or not to buy, that is the question. If it fits your playstyle, definitely. Your squad members will totally appreciate it. The rate of fire and firing capacity of this thing is just insane. For those that wield it, it'll be totally overpowered. It won't fit everybody because it's expensive to run with that many, like, balls. And once you feel the power of a stream of foam flying out, like with this rate of fire, you're honestly not gonna wanna take your finger off the trigger. Why shoot semi-auto when you can just burst fire groups of 10? Then you're guaranteed to hit, but then you, you know, dump your capacity pretty quick. And I also have to compliment the design of the blaster. It is big and it's not for smaller nerfers. But the design doesn't really waste much space. It's only as big as it really needs to be. Propulsion mechanism, feeding mechanism, massive capacity, battery, like the power source for the rest of the thing. The fancy muzzle's probably not necessary. This little butt end might not be, but that's like very little space compared to everything else that's raw function. So it's big, silly, and intimidating, but it's also bare bones in a way, which speaks to how much power is just like trapped in this massive body. <laughs> you heard me, it's trapped. Release the power. 
Objectively, the blaster does a really great job at what it's supposed to do. So the buy or not to buy is completely up to you and your value of $200. But I can assure you, if you field this blaster, your friends will love you, your enemies will hate you, and your wallet might as well. But that's completely your call. So hopefully I provided all the information you need to know whether or not you want to purchase the Prometheus. Hasbro was nice enough to send me this sample unit right before its launch. When it becomes available, I'll be sure to put a purchase link in the description box below. That concludes this video review. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical. I'm gonna go slay some zannies.